From the early to mid 20th century, Northeast Ohio and the city of Cleveland was a thriving metropolis, home to steel mills, auto manufacturing, rubber, polymer and tire companies, and a hub for manufacturing of all shapes and sizes. But in the latter part of the 20th century, the landscape in the Midwest and Northeast Ohio began to change. With that change came challenges, but also opportunity. And one of the areas of opportunity that has grown over the past 30 years and is now flourishing is in the area of healthcare innovation. Cleveland has been known for decades as a mecca for healthcare delivery. People come from all over the world, whatever their illness, and they know their best chance of getting better is here in Cleveland. Uh, as part of that, we wanted to create uh, a very vibrant uh, innovation and commercialization ecosystem. Bioenterprise is focused on growing the bioscience industry in the Cleveland area, and uh, we're focused on creating an environment that is uh, incredibly uh, nutrient rich for young entrepreneurs, whether you're coming out of an institution or you're uh, you know, an entrepreneur at large, and being able to navigate the system, find the resources you need to grow, get connected to funding, uh, and basically make Cleveland uh, one of the best places for young bioscience companies to grow and thrive anywhere in the world. Cleveland Clinic Innovations is a 50 person team uh, made up of engineers, uh, scientists, uh, business people. Uh, we are the commercialization arm of the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, at our core, we are about commercializing the intellectual property of the Cleveland Clinic. We receive more than 300 invention disclosures each year. Uh, we do more than 40 license agreements each year. So that's the core of what we do. I mean, it's never easy to bring technologies to the marketplace, uh, but having the horsepower of the Cleveland Clinic brand and the innovative uh, thought leaders that are here uh, gives us a real advantage. BioHow was founded 31 years ago, originally as the Edison Biotechnology Center. Today, we are a trade association that focuses on the bioscience industry. We have at least 300 plus current members, thousands over the years, and each of them have a story about how BioHow as a the trade group has helped them. So looking back a century ago, Cleveland was a thriving hub, and in many regards, it was one of the economic centers of the universe. But over the decades that followed, the economic landscape changed, and the Midwest became somewhat of a neglected and forgotten area. In the mid-1990s, there was essentially no biotechnology community here in Northeast Ohio. There were outstanding clinical and research institutions led by the Cleveland Clinic, Case Western Reserve University, and University Hospitals, but there really wasn't much beyond that. We knew we had a biomedical research base, um, but we didn't have much of a company base. Going back maybe into the mid-1980s, there were definitely a lot of uh, visionary business leaders across Ohio that were and really supportive of state funding for industry sector organizations. The institutions wanted to get together and work together. That was the first thing everybody was excited about. And they wanted to figure out, could we build an industry? And there's no cookbook at that point for building a biomedical industry, but we thought maybe we could do this. So we wrote a grant proposal to the Edison program. Uh, 1987, Governor Celeste delivered the check for $1 million, and we were off and running to form a biotech industry. It was a company that emerged out of Cleveland-based research in the mid-1990s called Osiris Therapeutics. Osiris was based on work that came out of Case Western Reserve and University Hospitals. But because we weren't able at that time in the mid-1990s to match that innovation to local entrepreneurs and local capital, that company left Cleveland and established itself in Maryland from where it continued to grow. People with great ideas could foster their ideas for a period of time, but then those great ideas would be stolen from the city by money that was outside Cleveland. That was really the wake up call for Cleveland's leaders to recognize what was in its midst and recognize that if we didn't capture that innovation and nurture it with the additional capital and entrepreneurship and support that we had as a community, that we weren't capitalizing on the assets that we were cultivating within our region. And effectively, we were planting all the right seeds, but we were letting the crop be harvested by others. The business leaders here in Cleveland really wanted a Northeast Ohio focused group. And so, and we concurred with that and helped uh, support the founding of 
what is now Bioenterprise. Bioenterprise was created to be a catalyst to help Cleveland and Northeast Ohio become one of the top five regions for biomedical innovation in the country. And very early in the game, we said that the companies we work with will raise $500 million in the first three years. And people said, you know, you guys are crazy. This is Cleveland, Ohio, you know, that can never, ever happen. And uh, interestingly, uh, in that period of time, the number was actually 580 million that, that was raised. So it was a, a very successful venture. John Harrington and I first came to Cleveland in the fall of 1994, fresh out of Stanford University Medical School. Along with the other co-founders, we had a vision to start a biotechnology company that would focus on developing safer and more effective treatments for areas where current medical care is either significantly limited or completely unavailable for many patients. One of the academic co-founders was Dr. Hunt Willard, who had been a faculty member at Stanford Medical School. He was recruited to become the chairman of the genetics department at Case Western Reserve University. Hunt was the one that suggested that we initially come out to Cleveland. We came out really with a mindset that we were only gonna be out here in Ohio for just a few months, and then we were gonna go back to California, which is where most of the biotech sector was located at the time. And here are these two guys from California coming in to do a biotech company, and it didn't seem like they were gonna hang around very long. When I first met uh, uh, Gil Van Bocklin and John Harrington, uh, they were young scientists full of vim and vigor, and, and they were, uh, wanting to do something that had not been done before. Uh, so we had finished the incubator on the fourth floor that was just pretty much uh, what was left over from the old Warner and Swayze offices. And we said, what if we built out actual lab space? And who would we build it around? And everyone said, you needed an anchor tenant. And there was Gil. And so there was an effort, there was a conscious effort to say, these California guys aren't going home. After we got out here, we saw a few things that were really fundamental that led to our ultimate decision to stay. It was the leadership at the Cleveland Clinic, Case, and University Hospitals that reached out to us and said, we want you guys to consider staying and building the company here. And so what started off as a temporary state of affairs eventually led to our decision to stay, to grow the company here, and it became our permanent home. The best asset that Cleveland, Ohio still has today is the one that it had when Gil and John were, were just coming to town, and that was healthcare. That was one of the reasons that BioEnterprise was ultimately created. If you want to do something disruptive, you first have to believe you can do it. We saw what Bill Sanford had accomplished at Steris, a company that he basically started from nothing. He licensed the core technology, attracted the technical talent, capital, and all the other things he needed to build a major biomedical company. And today, it's a $10 billion company listed on the New York Stock Exchange. The local leadership gathered together and asked themselves, what can we do to keep and attract more entrepreneurial companies right here in Northeast Ohio? In essence, we happened to be in the right place at the right time. And they presented us with a vision that we believed in and we all embraced together. That shared belief in the vision of what was possible became one of the key reasons we chose to stay and build Athersis right here in Cleveland. When Bio Enterprise was built, the team from Athersis were the first to move into the new facility as the original anchor tenant as they were soon followed by other companies that filled the biomedical business incubator to capacity. We helped overcome the misconception that it wouldn't be possible for a biotech company in Cleveland, Ohio to attract capital, talent, and everything else we needed. Our example helped give confidence and inspiration to many others that followed, and we're proud of that. Many people have no idea what is happening in Ohio, uh, here in Cleveland or elsewhere we helped kind of educate them on what is the ecosystem, what resources are here that can help accelerate the early growth of, of Athersis. It's really exciting to think back and realize all the different ways that the Athersis journey represents what all of us here in Cleveland have been trying to do. Over the next few years, there were other investments being made as well including the creation by University Hospitals of the Wolstein Research Building, which became home to the Center for Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine. Athersis had secured for itself a really exciting new technology platform in cell therapy. As we looked at our assets in Cleveland, and with the goal of wanting to be a top five set uh, region for biomedical innovation, 
we quickly realized that stem cells and regenerative medicine was one of those areas that was exciting, but not yet claimed in terms of leadership by any region across the country, if not the world at that time. And that if we came together and worked collaboratively, we could establish Cleveland as one of the top five centers for stem cell and regenerative medicine in the world. That led to the creation of the National Center for Regenerative Medicine, which was a fairly unique partnership of the three major research and clinical institutions in Cleveland. Athersis is the principal corporate partner and the state of Ohio that collectively committed over $20 million at that time and since then have spent hundreds of millions of dollars on top of that to establish this one-of-a-kind national center. The state put out as part of its third frontier campaign, part of the tobacco settlement money back in the early 2000s, an effort to promote commercialization and entrepreneurship around academic discovery. We've been fortunate to see uh, a number of great success stories in Cleveland. Bioenterprise uh, companies have gone on to raise billions of dollars of capital from venture investors, from strategic investors, from all sorts of sources around the country and around the world. And it's drawing on the resources, not just in Cleveland, but across the region and across the state. Uh, Aviona is a great example of that. That's a technology that came out of Nationwide Children's in Columbus. Aviona was founded in 2013 with the help of over a dozen rare disease foundations. And these foundations were made up of parents who were trying to find new novel therapies for their kids that had rare disease. So the team at BioEnterprise was critical for helping some of the initial success of the company. They helped provide guidance, uh, a place to establish thoughts uh, and new ideas with colleagues, um, and a space to be able to help get you know, the business off the ground. BioEnterprise helps culture the ecosystem. And in biotech, particularly in Cleveland, we've seen a thriving ecosystem over the past decade or more. And with multiple companies in an incubator, that helps us uh, provide support uh, it also helps provide expertise in areas like manufacturing or clinical trials that are critical for the success of an early stage company. We're in a really exciting time right now as a biotech sector with help from Jobs Ohio and other groups that are here to support and foster the biotech and pharmaceutical companies. Ohio is well positioned to continue its growth as a leader in biotech growth in the Midwest. Cardio Insight uh, is another great story. This is a a technology that came out of Case Western Reserve University with two co-founders. I came from India to the United States to join the graduate program at Case and the project that I worked on was to transfer from bench to bedside this cardiac mapping system. So it was part of my PhD in biomedical engineering and as I did the work it became pretty apparent that this uh, project had clinical and commercial potential. Bioenterprise as well as a lot of other players including Jumpstart and a whole set of investors helped nurture this company in its earliest stages and eventually it led to an acquisition by Medtronic. Uh, and so now one of Medtronic's research divisions is based here. Some of the stories we're most proud of are Cleveland Heart Lab and Explorus. They combine commercializing our technology into companies. Those companies were acquired, and so that acquisition certainly has a financial benefit to the Cleveland Clinic, but it's also it's significant market validation that the work that, that started at the Cleveland Clinic and was commercialized through those teams had uh, impact to the marketplace. One other example is Convelo Therapeutics. Uh, it's a technology out of Case Western Reserve University. Uh, two co-founders have identified a really creative way of screening candidate molecules for the ability to increase myelin sheath production, which has a lot of wonderful potential around neuro neurological diseases. Uh, this is a young company that caught the eye of Bill Sanford. Uh, he helped fundraise around this company. Uh, we've partnered with them to build their initial team. Uh, and they now are out, uh, you know, they've completed a nearly $8 million round of fundraising, and they're now out looking for their next set of strategic partnerships. The Harrington Discovery Institute uh, is a companion piece with Biomotive. Uh, one is not-for-profit, based at University Hospital's Cleveland Medical Center, uh, and it focuses on identifying world-class scientists and thought leaders and great uh, technologies with a lot of upside that may be still at a lab stage. There was an opportunity to continue to move those innovations forward for the benefit of patients, but what, that opportunity required a very different approach to doing business than traditional pharmaceutical company or venture capital business models. 
So we created the Harrington Project to address that opportunity, to create a novel bridge across Medicine's Valley of Death. Unfortunately, because of the investment models of traditional venture capital firms and pharmaceutical companies, most of those discoveries lie idle on the benches or in the pages of publications in major scientific journals. We started the Harrington Project to address that challenge and also that business opportunity and to do it with a very novel model, one that is mission driven, that blends philanthropy with investment to bridge these discoveries across Medicines Valley of Death and prepare novel medicines for patient benefit. Harrington helps take them through the early stages of development, often in the labs where uh, the science is being done, and then it pairs up with Biomotive, which takes it to the commercialization stage. And it's really exciting to see the progress being made. The Cleveland Clinic has also expanded with world-class facilities and clinical expertise that keep it at the forefront of medicine. I mean, we have the, the greatest hospital in the world and in the Cleveland Clinic. We got people from all over the world that come to Cleveland for medical treatment. And so with that being said, I think it only is natural to have all these medical companies being based in Cleveland because your number one uh, customer is right down the road with the Cleveland Clinic. And I think the people of this area and the people of the Midwest understand that Cleveland really is an up and coming medical community that's gonna be really the hub for the entire world. It's really pretty amazing that we have the Cleveland Clinic, University Hospitals, Case Western, even Cleveland State and Metro Health Center, uh, both coming together. And it allows us to build programs which are much stronger than they would be if those individuals were, were competing with each other. The infrastructure that exists with UH, Metro, and Cleveland Clinic, the word unique is overused. Uh, it may be unique to have three institutions, three healthcare providers of that quality in the region here is really rare, if not unique. There's a tremendous amount of talent, there's brain power, there's uh, funding, everything right here that you could possibly want. You got supportive government, supportive people that live here. And this is a great place that I think more companies should look at moving to be able to do business here. So I feel incredibly privileged to have been a part of growing Ohio's bioscience ecosystem. I think the most dangerous thing we can do as a region or as a state is rest on our laurels. If you look around, we've got a incredibly strong foundation today in Cleveland, thanks to the efforts of many, as well as the investments of many, including the state of Ohio. But for us to sustain that for the 21st century, we've got to continue to do more. Several years into building our vibrant bioscience cluster, we came up with a moniker for the region. The region, we decided to name it the medical capital, an aspirational title for what we could become if we continue to invest in and grow our regional bioscience and innovation capabilities. I strongly believe we can still become the medical capital, but to get to that aspiration requires a continuation of investment at the levels that we've seen over the last decade and a half to ensure that we realize our full potential. The return on that investment is absolutely huge and the patient benefit is incredible but it takes a long lead time. So it does take long-term investment and it takes investment by the state, by the federal government, by the grant support that we receive from the NIH and other types of sources, as well as our local community for the handoff, if you will, into the commercial sector. You know, we've really over time measured our, our success by the number of new company starts, the amount of capital being deployed, private capital being invested in young startups in Cleveland, uh, and the new jobs being created. And so it's exciting to see that, you know, if you go back 15 years, even go back just 10 years, uh, you would see 20 deals, you know, maybe $100 million coming in. Now the work that we're doing, it's 50 deals getting done each year. It's a quarter billion dollars of capital coming into the region. It's really been uh, a great ride uh, to see so much positive growth over a really pretty compact amount of time. Uh, and it's been exciting to see the growth that's happened in Cleveland. Northeast Ohio is genuinely collaborative culture. The companies we work with, a lot of them do their business in San Francisco and Boston. And I love those cities and they're great cities, but they do not possess the natural collaborative culture that, that is, exists in Northeast Ohio. So for you know, the way I describe it to early stage companies, 
you absolutely should consider doing business in Boston, in San Francisco, but you're making a mistake if you don't consider doing business in Cleveland as well. And we won't be the right answer for every company, but for many companies that don't consider Cleveland today, we will be the right answer because of their ability to collaborate with places like UH, with places like the Cleveland Clinic um, and Metro. So uh, I think the number one characteristic of Northeast Ohio is a collaborative culture of the region. It is a committed effort, not only by those institutions, uh, not only by the economic development ecosystem of bioenterprise and Jumpstart and all these other folks that are going to involve in this. It's, it's civic commitment. It's a commitment of business leadership. It's a commitment at a state level to invest in what we do well, to get better at what we were already doing well. And so it's really exciting now to see um, Maybe we're not a diamond yet, the ultimate outcome of, of pressure and time, but we're well on our way there. And I think what's really exciting, having, uh, I think, gone through a phase of, can we really do this, to proving it that we can do this, now it's a, it's a point of time of what do we do with this? Now that we see you know, Cleveland not only as a world-class leader in healthcare innovation and commercialization, but a world-class leader in health overall. I think as we take a look back and see what's transpired over the past 25 years, it's actually pretty remarkable. We've seen billions of dollars of capital invested into the region. We've seen an incredible influx of talent, new company formation, and growth of those companies along the way. And I think it's actually pretty remarkable. I think the moral of the story is that you can accomplish a lot if you have a clear and compelling vision, effective leadership, and you have the persistence and determination and willingness to make the investment to make it happen.